Hello and welcome back to House of Whiskey TV. Hey everyone. I am Sam Sneed. This is Nigel Kelly. Hey. And we are coming to you from way down here in New Zealand. And today, well, let's see. Nigel, what do we got on for today? Craig and Law. Any of you have seen um, the Angel Share will have seen uh, Charlie McLean talking about uh, Craig and Moore. Today we're going to do the Craig and Moore Distillers Edition. It's 40%. Um, normal Craig and Moore is 12 years old. This one has then been finished in a, in a port barrel. Um, some people, Sam, are saying port wine pipe. Sam, obviously those are two different things. You know, let's try this whiskey. Space side whiskey, you can say 40%. A little bit there. A little bit there. No better way to start off a day. Slow chip. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of a, a brief, a briefing, as we do, on what a finish is, the distiller's editions are just that. They're whiskeys that start out as their normal self. In other words, a Craig and Moore start out as its normal Craig and Moore 12, Dalhwini, Dalhwini 15, the Talisker 10, and so on down the line. And then what these master distillers will do is they'll select out given barrels that they themselves buy as the best of the best, I guess. And then they'll finish them, as they say. And in this case, as Nigel pointed out, it's finished in a port barrel. So finished loosely is regarded as anywhere from six months up to two years. Thereafter, they call it a double matured, not a double malt. It is double matured. In other words, matured in two different barrels. Just not to confuse those of you out there in TV land. There's a really nice sweetness on the nose, um, almost like uh, jelly babies. It's got a beautiful golden color. I think some of that, comparing that to the Craigamore 12, must come from that port barrel. It's quite viscous, it's quite oily on its legs. It drops down. Interestingly enough, the original nose you get is a little bit of the those original barrels, those, those American oak barrels, because the original barreling comes from American oak bourbon barrels, and then also some refilled sherry barrels as well, and then of course they'll get married together, and then finished off in those port barrels that we're talking about. Banana, vanilla. It's amazing to me how much of the original barrels comes through. I, I really pick up a lot of, of vanilla in there as well. Cheers. Let's see how we go on the palate. Now, the port is definitely, definitely coming through on the palate there. Yeah. Right there towards the middle and towards the end. Yeah. I get it right at the end. I get it. See, I, I like that. I like that porty finish. I like that. There's a, a lovely sweetness, actually. A fruitiness, really. A quite, quite rich in fruit. Yeah, that, the, the malt comes through. The, 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 um, it's quite drying on the finish. Yeah. Like uh, Right now, my palate's pretty dry. And for me, personally, I, I don't tend to like... Uh, well, like's a bit of a strong word, but I don't tend to, my favorite whiskeys don't tend to be real drying on the palate. And like right away, not right away, let's say maybe 30 seconds into it, I feel like my palate's quite dry, See, which it, that'll be off that port, sorry. I reckon that, that this, this whiskey is actually really good. I, I'm, I'm liking it more and more every time I try it. <clears throat> and I'd love to see it at more than 40%. I would be very interested to see I mean, about 46%. It, there's a richness to that. There's a loveliness. That, you know, it, this is the sort of whiskey, if you're into things like Glendronach uh, 12 year old, for example, this would be something worth trying. Um, man, that, that sweetness of the port comes through in the end there. I'll tell you what, what, what's interesting is, are you picking up a little bit of that smoke kind of on the back end? There's a hint, just, just a, a wee hint of smoke in there. I'd venture to say there's actually a little... little uh, it's funny you say that because that's what I was thinking, but I was, I was starting to doubt myself because I never really thought of Cragmore as having I've smoke, never actually it? looked at Cragmore, thought of Cragmore as smoky, but there's definitely a hint of... Yeah. Well, that's something we'll have to check, boys and girls, but I, I would definitely say that some of those uh, maltings are from a bit of peat smoke. And and I'm not a particular huge fan of Cragmore per se. I, I definitely respect their craft and what they do, but... Um, it, for me, Craig and Moore has always been quite a, a sweet whiskey. I don't tend to, of course, I love my bourbons, but I don't tend to like sweeter scotches. And, and Craig and Moore has always been a bit sweet on my palate. The other thing, this would be perfect after dinner. Cheese. Oh, this would be fantastic. Would definitely go with cheese. Quite nice. It's got a, a, a 
creamy nature to it. And you're right when you were saying about it being viscous. I'm actually the the, the, the mouth feel is really quite um, amazing. And again, for only being forty percent, that was forty three, forty six. If I'm not mistaken, all the distillers editions, they do bottle them at 40, 43 would potentially be the most, but I think they're all pretty much bottled right there at the 40% mark. Except for the, I think the Talisker is up at 45.8. is, is a normal. normal stock standard Talisker. But uh, yeah, I, I can definitely see, look, what we try to do is educate everyone and, and give you an opinion. We don't, we, you'll never hear Nigel and I score a whiskey or give an A, B, C or a, a number grade as well, 80 or 90. We don't normally do that. We leave, leave that up to you guys, the public, to decide whether you like it or not. Because whiskey is a very, very personal thing. But I can definitely see why Crag and Mort is such a popular whiskey. It's, um, it, it just would fit into to many, many niches from mm. a, a middle-aged woman to an older man to a, a young kid coming out of uni. I mean, it would definitely fit many, many different niches. So it's, it's a very easy uh, scotch to drink. So again, Craigamore, it's a Speyside whiskey um, in a place called Ballandolic. Hopefully I've got that pronunciation right. Um, but they, they actually use cooling water directly from the spay during production. Um, 40% forty percent alcohol, the original Craigmore is 12 years old, this distiller's edition. How long do you reckon it goes in the port? Six months? A year? Port pipes can be a little bit more stronger, verbose, and they'll cast their, their lightness off quite a bit faster than a, an Oloroso sherry barrel, per se. So I would say I, six months to 18 months at top. So I'd say somewhere uh, along in that middle range there. And, of course, this is going to change every uh, every barreling, which we learned when we were at Lagerville and visiting with Ian. Because this is the 98 um, bottled in 2012, so each one of them will be different. The last one I tried was the 93, um, and I don't remember it having quite a su- a, a, as much sweetness as I'm picking up on that. But I just yeah, said really real like fruity. Um, it, it, it's, it's quite, to be fair, it's a little bit better than I originally had thought, but uh, I definitely can see where it, it fits in. Excellent. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for joining us here at House of Whiskey TV. Um, Tune in again for some more. Anything else to say about it, Sam? Well, just keep in mind that any uh, tasting that we do do, you can always have a look at the bottom and, and go to you know your local, whether what country you're in. We've got uh, websites for all different countries, so you can always have a look at the bottom and see where to go. Join us on Facebook and have a look at what else we do here in the House of Whiskey TV. Till next time. And cut. <laughs>